you? Basically, she's 10 now, but had this have happened in what's going with what the proposals are, she wouldn't be here now and be talking to you. OK, thanks very much. Martin, we saw you walking in at about 2.30 today. Yeah. Um, if this place had been closed, what would you have done? Oh, it's been a long, painful walk down to Woolwich. Because yeah. you've got a bad leg. Yeah. And finally, Aston, local lad, you've written a bit of a protest song about this after this place saved your life. Yeah, um, it's available on iTunes now. Oh, OK, just sing us a little bit of it. OK, um, Lewis Shimar's born and raised where I spent most of my days Please. indoor market Saturdays I love this town I, I love, love this place, place. And, of course, it's not just about this place. It's about those 30 A&Es around the country with campaigners warning if this place can close, what will happen to your local casualty unit. And I'm sure the Lewisham wrap will be available on, uh, yeah, on, on MP3 soon. Yeah. Uh, the Shadow Health Secretary, Andy Burnham, joins us in just a moment. But first, let's talk to Helen Robinson, who knows firsthand the impact changes to emergency services can have. Morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you Morning. had an operation to remove your gallbladder. You've got an infection soon after um, the normal reaction yeah. of anyone in your situation would go let's go to the A&E uh, it was closed and that's when yeah. your problems really started yeah our um, accident and emergency unit was actually um, closed a few years ago it was replaced with an urgent care which is fine if you've got bumps bruises sprains they, they can sort that out but because they took a lot of the other services away at the hospital unfortunately if you turn up there with something like a post-operative infection which you need readmitting for, they can't do anything about it. And basically you've got to be transferred 15 miles to the nearest A&E, which is now in Blackburn. They're just completely overrun with the fact that, you know, our services have been taken away. Um, as a parent, I was always concerned about the A&E disappearing from, we were actually in Burnley, so there's like 83, around 83,000 people and no proper A&E unit. Um, so you're reliant on the motorway link being clear um, to drive the 15 miles down to down to Blackburn to be seen and then of course when you get there they're servicing all the other little towns um, because the services have gone from from other places as well or they close at half past eight in an evening um, at Burnley in particular there's no paediatric doctors there after five o'clock because there are no overnight services so if you have got children it, it's actually pointless at the moment going to urgent care um, the NHS direct, they will direct you over to Blackburn. But of course, you know, you've got the transport issues. Uh, it, like it, I say, we, we had to get there one night in, in an emergency situation with my then nine year old. Um, the motorway was closed for repair. So then you've got to negotiate, you know, the little towns and villages to actually get to the hospital. So it's, you know, it's had quite a big impact on this community, I think. Well, I'm delighted to see that you're, you're yeah. fitting well now, and thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. That's the trouble. When you go to A&E, you know, usually you're in distress. Absolutely. If you're a parent and your uh, kids are, you're, you're sometimes really And her situation could have been uh, so much, mm, so much more different. Definitely. Yeah. Well, Shadow Health Secretary Andy Burnham is right here. Andy, thank you for joining us. It's, it's very easy for you to take pot shots today. You know, when you hear stories like that, it's very easy. But we would have to say some of it has to be laid at the door of the Labour Party for the PFI when, when you were in government. Well, it is difficult, and I wouldn't pretend it, it wasn't. You know, when we were in government, we did close some A&Es because sometimes it makes sense to do that. You can save more lives by centralising services on one particular site. You know, every locality can't necessarily sustain an A&E. However, what's different about Lewisham is that it's, this A&E is being closed purely on cost grounds. To solve financial problems in one trust, the government are saying they're going to take away the A&E department, the successful A&E, of, an of another. Mm -hmm. And now that is taking the NHS into completely new ground. And I think it's dangerous to do that, given the pressure that we're seeing on A&E in London, but right across the country. So what do we do? What can, what can be done? I mean, if you, if you were in charge, what would you do right now? Well... I think at the moment A&E is overstretched and understaffed. All over the country we're hearing reports this winter of patients spending hours on trolleys. The government is missing its own lowered national A&E target. And also stories of patients held in queues in ambulances outside the A&E can't even get in the A&E because the staff aren't there to admit them. We're going to release date details later today of one patient in the west of England held for five hours 42 minutes in the back of an ambulance outside an A&E. Now, this is because they do not have enough staff on the ground to function properly, to bring the patients in. We've seen 5,000 nurses jobs lost under Mr Cameron and you know quite frankly they don't have enough staff on the ground to do the job. Uh, you've kept very quiet about what uh, Labour would do though, so give us your mission statement. How would you solve all this? 
Well, it's difficult, and I'm not coming on to say it's, it's easy. You know, the NHS does face uh, pressure, uh, particularly at this to start with. So time how of, would you fix your No, mess? we left the, an NHS with the lowest ever waiting list and the highest ever patient satisfaction, but we didn't get everything right, and I wouldn't come on pretending that we did, but we did a pretty good job overall uh, with the NHS. Uh, but right now, the NHS, I think, is suffering because we've got too many hospitals that have, that have cut staff to, to dangerously low levels. The regulator is saying that around one in six hospitals in England is, does not have adequate staffing levels. Now, my, what would I be doing right now? That is what the government has got to address. They've got to ensure that there are enough staff on the ground to provide safe care and help the NHS get through the winter. And you know, that is uh, the responsibility of the Health Secretary and indeed the Prime Minister. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for joining indeed. us. Thank you. Coming up.